Hello and welcome back to Art Club, you guys. Excited for day two of our feelings project that we've been working on. Um, as a reminder, make sure that for next club time, we are getting set up for a little bit of a mess because we will be using our um, watercolors and we're going to want all of the stuff that entails, so watercolor paints and water and paint brushes and maybe a table covering and a smock. Um, we'll also need the straw for next class as well, so make sure you have all of that ready. Another thing is we might want to start collecting some leaves from outside and pressing them because that's going to be one of the optional add-ons on the last day of club. So make sure that you are collecting those if you're able to. Not a requirement, just something fun bonus that you can do as well. All right, so for today, hopefully you were able to complete this by adding the different pictures from the bottom and cutting them out and putting them in the spots you thought they worked best. Now there's a few of them I could definitely see interchange like bad and unhappy. Well those look pretty close, right? There's just a little bit of a more of a frown on this one. So they could go either way. Energetic and happy I could see being flip flop. There's a few of them that I could see kind of being switched around a, a little bit. And that is okay because honestly every time we have a certain emotion or feeling our face might look a little bit different. So that is totally all right. But we're going to use this as a reference today. Okay. And we're going to want to, as we're looking at it, we might want to notice like the shape of how the eyebrows go. Are they arched up like this in the center? Like maybe sad or tired might look. Are they down and squinting towards center and a little bit of a furrowed eyebrow? Like maybe angry or concentrating might look. Um, the eyes. Do the eyes look kind of squinty like our cheeks are pushing them up like we're happy? Do they look bigger and rounded and maybe drooping a little bit on the side like we're sad with our mouth? Are the corners turned up? Are they turned down? Is that lip out? Are they pursed? How does, how does everything look and how can we tell that that makes the person, like what feeling are they experienced based on how our facial features are positioned. So we're going to pay a close attention to that today as we begin to draw our own. Okay, so we're going to get this sheet of paper out here. I'm going to show you guys some of them that I have done so far. There we go. Um, I'll do one more with you guys together here, but definitely um, if you want to see even more yet, feel free to go into... Um, the chart and check out all the different ones we did during the class period as well. But we'll do one together on this shorter video too. So looking at my sheet, I'm going to pick out what one do I want to do next? Maybe, you know what I haven't done yet was angry. So maybe I'll do angry next. Now I would suggest for you guys to use pencil while doing this. That way you can always erase. However, I am going to use a marker just so it shows up better on the camera because I found Pencil just doesn't show up great on the camera. So I'm going to do angry. We'll use this face right down here. I'm going to get out my marker. So with angry, I know the eyebrows usually kind of point down towards the center here. So I'm going to start off with that. Eyes kind of pointing down. Or eyebrows, I should say. Look at you can already tell. Just from that one part of the body, the eyebrows, we can already tell that that's going to be some kind of an angry, upset face, right? Um, and then, let's see, we can draw the eyeballs in. I'm going to maybe even have mine be almost like they're um, being blocked a little bit. The eyebrows are so furrowed that we almost can't see the top part of the eyes because of it. Okay, and we can choose to add pupils in there or not. I'm going to, I feel like it adds some more character to it. And um, so maybe then the mouth might be a little bit, uh, right? Like angry. So here we go. Give me that angry scowl. Like that. Maybe add a little bit of a button nose in there too. Oh yeah, that kid is looking angry, aren't they? Look at that. Definitely angry. So here's some of the other ones. 
that we've done so far. All right, so have fun practicing on this sheet first. You can do all 12 of them, you can do six of them, whenever you feel comfortable to move on to your big sheet of paper, go ahead and move on to that one. Um, so the first thing we need to think about as we're moving on to the big piece of paper is we need to leave room for the hair next time we, we do this. So I'm gonna make the head kind of lower down here because I'm intending to blow the, the straw, the uh, watercolor up towards the top of the paper. Now, if you're thinking you want the long hair coming down, you might want to start yours closer to the top, leaving some room for the top of the hair, right? But then blowing it downward. But I'm going to start mine down here and have it blowing upward. I feel like it just looks kind of fun and crazy that way. So I'm going to start with the shape of the head. There's all kinds of different shapes to faces, right? Mine tends to be long and skinny, so I'm going to go with that, but you could have maybe more of a squared jawline, maybe more of a heart shape or rounded face. It could be you, it could be someone you know, it could just be a random character. Totally up to you. So I'm going to start by drawing. So here I've got kind of like this is where this part of my face kind of dents in and then the cheeks kind of come out, comes back together for the chin and then on this side same thing and comes back down for the chin there. Okay. Now, one thing you can do to make it look more like a character is um, once you get to the Sharpie marker, I suggest doing this in pencil first always, but of course I'm doing it in Sharpie so it's easier to see on the screen. But if you want to do yours in Sharpie as well, so do the um, pencil first and then come back with your Sharpie and make some areas thicker and some thinner. It tends to give it more of that caricature look. So can you see how my line's thicker here? It gets thinner, thicker, starting to get thin again down here by the chin. Maybe it thins out here again. Maybe thicker by this cheek, thinner and thick. Totally up to you. You don't have to do that part, but it does just kind of add a little bit more personality to it. So. There we go. That looks kind of fun. Okay, next I'm going to do the neck. So usually I start the neck a little bit in from where the, the cheeks come out like that. And it's just a slight bend inward for the neck. Once again, I can add some thickness in certain parts. Just to add that character to it. So you can kind of see if I look at this side of the neck versus this side. This just has more energy, more movement, more visual interest to it. I'm going to do the same thing to that side, add that thickness, like so. All right, cool. I am going to leave the top part of the head open because that is where the hair is going to be coming out of with my watercolors tomorrow. So I'm going to leave that next. Ears, right? We could add some ears to it. Um, so I am going to do some kind of fun and funky Shrek almost looking ears here. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Shrek. Maybe you haven't. It's kind of older now, isn't it? But that is a funny one. And I do think that the ears on Shrek are kind of cute. And obviously this is kind of a cartoonish looking thing anyway. So if we want to make it a little bit not super realistic, it does kind of add to the, the fun of this project. So feel free to have some fun with that. Okay, I've got my ears. Next up, I always like to do um, either eyes or eyebrows next. I think I'm going to start with the eyes because that'll help me with placement of the eyebrows. So I'm going to now decide, like right now it could be any face, right? You've just got the, the basic outline ready to go. So it could be surprised or happy or mad. Hmm. So we could do kind of anything. I'm going to kind of go with a goofy face. Like somebody, my kids always run around, they kind of go like, ah. So that's kind of what... I'm going for that goofy face they always make when they're like trying to surprise me and be silly. So that's, that's what we're doing. But you guys choose for yourself. Maybe you want to do a feeling that you're feeling currently. Maybe you're doing this picture for somebody else. And so you're going to um, make the feeling that they typically express. Um, so 
it's up to you. Have, have fun with this. And also remember, we can make more than one of these. So I'm showing you how to do one in the video, but feel free to make even more if you want to. You could do your entire family if you want, or yourself and a friend. Have fun with it. Okay, so I'm going to do one eye kind of big like that, and the other one's going to be kind of squinting in like this, because remember there, ha, right? So that eye's kind of squinting in. Um, give a pupil to this one. And I always like to, whenever I'm doing the pupil, I like to leave a little white spot for the highlight of their eye. I think it just adds more life to it. Okay, so then their eye rolls. They kind of have one that goes like squiggly, and then one that's kind of up. Once again, this is a goofy face they make, so it's going to look a little silly. So that eyebrow almost looks mad, right? But then because of this one, we can tell that we're more on the goofy side than on the angry side. I'm going to give a little bubble nose here. My kiddos all have some freckles, so I'm going to give some freckles here. Maybe even a little cheek mark on this side because I'm going to show that they are just being kind of silly and goofy, so their cheek is kind of squinting up like that. And then they've got that big old cheesy smile, rawr, like that. So here we go, making that, whoop, and we'll bring it down like that. Got a little smile mark on that side too. And we'll add some teeth in here as well. Boop, boop, boop. Could even black one of those out if we've got a missing tooth. Who knows? I'm going to thicken up some of these lines as well, especially on the lips. Once again, it just adds a little bit more character to it by thickening some of those lines. So feel free to do that in various parts. Maybe a little bit on the nose here. Maybe a little bit on the eye as well. So have fun with it. But basically we want to have something that looks kind of like this set up and ready to go for tomorrow. And then tomorrow we're going to use those watercolors um, to blow, or we're going to just try to blow the watercolors out like this. And we're going to end up with something that looks kind of like this. So you can see on our directions today too, you can also color this in, have that part ready to go, so coloring in, in the face. You don't have to, like it's totally optional as you can see in the examples here. Some are colored in, some aren't. So up to you, you can use markers or color pencils, whatever, whatever you think is gonna look best. Um, so have fun with this, but we wanna definitely have at least one drawing like this kind of set up, ready to go, so we can use our watercolor tomorrow and our straw and whoosh, Give it some crazy and fun hair. All right, you guys. I hope you have fun with this. I can't wait to see how those faces turn out. We'll see you next time.